This week on Couch Tomatoes, we're talking Netflix's El Camino, a Breaking Bad movie, and giving you our fresh picks on what to watch. Hello, friends. I'm Naz Perez, and welcome back to Couch Tomatoes, the new show where we tell you what to watch and why in a non-aggressive way, of course, sponsored by Freshetta Pizza. So today on the show, we are diving deep into El Camino, Breaking Bad movie, and I can't think of anyone better to break it all down with me than my friend and TV writer, Aaron Mallory Long. Thank you. I'm so excited. And chemistry teacher turned comedian, Mark Ellis. Thank you. The uh, kids wouldn't listen to me. Started <laughs> cooking some meth for a few years. That didn't pan out, so I hit the stage. What a coincidence. <laughs> Jeez. I'm just here to talk about the car El Caminos. I grew up in Virginia. There's a lot That's of El Caminos. What year. All right, guys, so here's the deal. Each episode, we'll cover trending stories in TV, then we'll do a deep dive into one show we deem binge-worthy, or really anything on television like this film. And then we'll leave you with our fresh picks, which are basically shows on TV that we think you guys should watch. So let's jump right into this week's top stories. Story number one, a third installment in the acclaimed Band of Brothers limited series will be heading to Apple TV Plus instead of HBO. Wow. The new series called Masters of Air will be the first in-house development for Apple and comes at a reported cost of over $200 million. Yeah, I think $200 million dollars is more than World War II costs back in the day. <laughs> so we're recreating it, but you're right, you had me at Air Force because Band of Brothers, we got we got to see the Army then with the Pacific, we got the Marines, right. and to see an Air Force unit go against Germany, that to see the dog fighting up close is what I'm hoping we're yeah. going to get to yeah. see. So this is like between Top Gun Maverick next year <laughs> yeah. and this, yes. there's going to be a lot of great aerial combat. That's true. No, that's true. It's Who like, doesn't like aerial combat? It's the best. Alright guys, second story is Jennifer Aniston is putting those Friends reboot rumors to rest, Aaron, contain yourself. In a new interview with Variety, Aniston revealed that even though there's been an interest in a Friends movie, the producers of the sitcom won't allow it. <clears throat> I get it, kind of. I mean, it's like I, I love Friends so much, I will watch anything that they produce of Friends, but also at the same time as a fan, I'm not like clamoring for that. I don't like need a movie of it. Like I feel like the 10 seasons... Ten seasons are enough. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Don't we remember in like 2002 and 2003 when we we're like, can we just get to the finish line? Yeah. Here? Can we just get? Can can Ross and Rachel get together and have the monkey walk down the aisle and give him? Yeah. The drink? Like, let's get this thing done. And now I'm at my favorite coffee shop two weeks ago and they're celebrating Friends' 25th anniversary. It's everywhere. It's it's all over the. When it's did everywhere. we start celebrating the 25th anniversary? <laughs> we have a 25th anniversary for Cheers. We're very <laughs> no. We're very nostalgic now. We just yeah. live in a very nostalgic. Timeline. It's so true. It's like, like we're living in the past. We're yeah. not even living in the present anymore. It is a shame. I did want to remix the Smelly Cat, but you know, here we are, guys. <laughs> All right. And finally, Amazon has released a trailer for its hit Emmy winner, The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, which returns in December for season three. Aaron, we have talked about this so much. Like this show just wants to be a musical so it bad. It just is <laughs> screaming to be a musical. And in the trailer, we have Sutton Foster singing over everything. And I'm like, just be a musical. It's okay, buddy. I love you. Like, I'll love you as a musical. Too. Like, right. it's fine. I was so stoked to see Sterling K. Brown Me in too. it, but sad that I did not see Zachary Levi in the trailer. I am just excited to watch this show because what I love about it is that it really feels like it gets the time right as far as what stand-up comics were doing, what kind of shows they were doing. And so now she's going on the road. She's opening for a huge music act. And this is what it's like to be a, a comic that is featuring where you want to get to the next level. You know you're not the headliner. So you're trying to get as much knowledge. You're trying to learn all the different cities, all the different routes, who can be booking you in the future. That's what I love about Mrs. Maisel is the authenticity to stand up back in the day. All right, friends, those are our week's top stories. But before we dive deep into El Camino, Aaron and I actually took a quick moment to discuss how we choose what to watch and why, because there are so many good options out there. Check it out. Aaron, is it hard for you to pick a show to watch these days? I feel like every day there's a new show coming out and I'm constantly adding shows to my watch list. Oh, totally. I'm always scrolling social media and it's like between what the critics want you to watch and fans, it's so much stuff. It's overwhelming. Yes. Every day I'm like, what are my coworkers watching? What are my friends watching? Sometimes I think, what's my future husband watching? <laughs> I just wish it came easier to me like eating does. Because when it comes to eating, my go-to is freshetta. Because when I'm eating freshetta, I never have to limit myself to one kind or like one slice. Also, I really like to pair my pizza toppings with what I'm watching. Ooh. So it's like a Hawaiian pizza if I'm in the mood for like an action comedy. That's fine. And then it's the brick oven five cheese if I want something a little more serious. Oh my god, full disclosure, <laughs> I eat the brick oven five cheese when I'm home alone so I can eat the entire thing by myself. That's how delicious it is. <laughs> totally, I'm here for that as well. Can oh we god. eat? Oh my god, I was hoping you'd ask. <laughs> Let's do it. 
It is time to talk El Camino, a Breaking Bad movie written and directed by Vince Gilligan. It picks up right where the series ended six years ago. Crazy. And the film is currently certified fresh with a 94% on the tomato meter at the time of this recording. And it's really just what everyone has been talking about over the weekend. Also, just know this is your official spoiler alert. So if you haven't seen Breaking Bad or El Camino, do not at us. But I am so excited to talk about El Camino, a Breaking Bad movie with you guys. Do you think that fans got the closure they deserve? And do you think Jesse got the ending that he needed? I think Jesse got the ending that he needed, but I also think that he got an ending that I had already filled in for him. Like at the end of Breaking Bad, he has this great moment and he's driving away in the car in the El Camino and he's like so like you realize that he's free. He's like escaped. Right. So I sort of filled in as a viewer, as a fan, like what the movie told us happened. So it's fun to go and watch him and watch him go through all of that mm -hmm. and watch him get to Alaska. But I also sort of like, I sort of wanted the movie to just be like two years in the future, he's just set up in Alaska, like living there, like to see what his new life is. Because for me, I got closure from Jesse's character from the series. I think really? that's a trick with yeah. this movie is that because we are such big Breaking Bad fans <laughs> right. that you're going to create these narratives in yeah. your head. You're gonna write your own fan fiction yeah. before this movie comes out. <laughs> right. And so I, I do think it was important to actually watch Jesse matriculate from his situation in Albuquerque to get to Alaska. And there were some nice surprises within that narrative narrative, yeah. but overall, yeah, I think we assumed that he was going to get somewhere, and so what this movie did is, yes, it, it, it satisfied my appetite for Breaking Bad, but now I want more, and I want to see that movie <laughs> yeah. two years from now. What is Jesse up to in Alaska? Is he also working at a Cinnabon? Yeah. Well, exactly, <laughs> exactly. We always want more. We're never satisfied. I got to no. say, I actually was totally satisf satisfied, and I'm with you, Mark. Like, I just think Jesse had been through so much. He was a character that I related to the most. He's the one that had a soul. You know, when he was throwing the blood money out of the window in yeah. the final season, giving it to random people. Like, I feel like he never got his redemption story, unlike the other main characters who either all died or we kind of <laughs> knew what was going to happen to them months later. You know, like, all right, this kid's going to be fine. He's going to have a yeah. lot of money. That never happened for Jesse. Jesse. And for Vince to just write this for us so beautifully and call it El Camino, not just, you know, after the car, but El Camino actually means journey and path. So I really like seeing his path to Alaska and just how he got a chance to properly say goodbye to all these people that he never really got a chance to properly say goodbye to, you know, like Mike and Walt, mm -hmm. like just Hearing Walt tell him, you know, you would have amounted to something was just, I was so happy to see all of these characters come back. Who were you guys happy to see come back? I was, I was happy to see everyone pretty much. Like, I was just like, oh, this is nice. I mean, it's nice. It's fun. It's what Mark was saying. It's fun as a fan to like see more stuff in the world. Like, you're just like, oh, great. I love these characters. Like, what are you guys doing? This is wonderful. Like, even the flashbacks that are terrible, you know, like yeah. Jesse's going through such horrible things. It's just like, Oh, this is so fun. Like, these are my friends and I like seeing them. Yeah. You know, it's it's fun to see all of those people. I think it's it was weird to see Walter because at the end of the series, you end and he is a super villain. Like, he right. just has become like this crazy super villain. And it's like, we don't have that aspect in this movie at all, obviously, because he's dead. And then it's like to go back and see this like very tender moment was just sort of like, oh, yeah, like. They, were they do love each other. Yeah, like yeah. they were friends at one point. And like, he's bald again. Yeah, Good job, yeah, Brian yeah. Cranston. Yeah, yeah his, his head's Digitally. a little misshapen in this, yeah. but hey, yeah, we'll yeah. forgive that. Just and a little. What was really nice for me was was we got to see one last great Robert Forster uh, yes. Yes. performance because like, like seeing him, it's like oh yeah, and he, and he and he literally passed away the day that the movie came out. Which and is so. crazy from brain cancer. So sad. Yeah, so yeah. wild. But he was great, and and really the star of this movie to me, as great as Aaron Paul was, was Vince Gilligan. Oh, okay. it was Vince Gilligan because the the filmmaking style that's what I missed is yeah, that you don't yeah. see that in television or film for that matter and so there's just certain shots that you know is just Vince Gilligan has had this shot forever the shot of Jesse trying to find the money in every room in the house yes. that was so cool to me that's what I missed from Breaking Bad I know and it reminds us why we love Breaking Bad yeah. because of the way it looked and how there was nothing else on television like it at the time I agree with you but when you said star of the film I thought you were going to say Jesse Plemons because Todd <laughs> guys Todd singing Dr. Hook's 
sharing the night yes. together. <laughs> to me, I watched it like three times. He is so good at just playing such a good sociopath. I think it's totally. because his eyes are just all black and beady. He like looks like a shark almost. And even he had, he had this little yeah. moment of humanity, which I didn't know Todd had in him. Right. Humanity, when, which moment? When Jesse, he's being tortured. And because Jesse had given the gun back to him earlier. And so he's just thinking, man, I feel bad for this kid. Can we, <laughs> yeah. can we cut? The, it's like, wow, even Todd yeah. is a yeah. person. That's well, like, he, oh, okay. I saw him do that in the final <laughs> season, too, when he brought him, I think, Ben and Jerry. A little bit, yeah. Him, yeah. 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 Yeah, you would always see that. But yeah, how he would talk about the housekeeper was just so creepy. You know, he's like, oh, no, excellent housekeeper. <laughs> <laughs> like, it was just so funny. I want more Dr. Hook, definitely. Um, <laughs> more Dr. Hooks. But that's also what Vince is so good at, is, you know, putting, like, the best music in that stuff. Yeah, um, that's true. I want to ask you guys, though, because unlike other TV series like Sopranos and Game of Thrones, the final season of Breaking Bad is critically acclaimed. In fact, Breaking Bad seasons two, three, four, and five, all 100% on the tomato meter. So one would argue that it was definitely a risk to go back to this story and this plot line and just touch something that's so perfect. So do you guys think this movie needed to be made or should Jesse's fate kind of been left open-ended? I don't think it needed to be made, but I'm not mad that it was made. Like, <laughs> I, you know, I enjoy, I enjoy watching it. I enjoy that thing, I, that, that world. The finale of Breaking Bad is perfect. Unreal. Like, <laughs> it's just perfect. And it's that moment. It's that moment of Jesse driving away. Like, I felt like that was perfect closure for him. You, like, feel that this is what's going to happen with him. You, like, feel his emotion. Um, I didn't think it was necessary to make this movie, but I'm not I'm not mad about it. Yeah, yeah. this wasn't this wasn't a need. This wasn't water for me, but it was like a really nice soda. You yeah. Know? Like, like yeah. I don't I don't need so this to ice survive. Cold soda. But, yeah. Oh God, is it refreshing. Yeah. And I think the reason why we got this and why it was less of a risk was that we have Better Call Saul too. So we've been right. back to this world before and the fans have proven that we're gonna accept different characters that maybe have ancillary ties to breaking Bad. We have one character that's a gateway into a different story. And so that's why I don't think that this is going to be the last Breaking Bad movie. I love that we call it El Camino really? a Breaking Bad movie. We could have tons of Breaking Bad movies, and I think the fans would be up for it. Yeah, well, let the rumors fly. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm really happy that this movie got made for all the reasons I said before. I really wanted to see Jesse's story kind of just finish, but I didn't feel like the movie needed to be two hours long. Like, my dad <laughs> called me, and I was telling him we were doing the show today, and he's like, well, what's the movie about? What happens? And I was like, not much happens in the movie, <laughs> but it's beautiful. Yeah. And I love yeah. that Vince kind of went back to New Mexico and we got to, you know, see all that scenery again. And in fact, we actually sat down with Aaron Paul and talked to him about what it was like shooting back in New Mexico and keeping this movie a secret. It's great. Check it out. Uh, to be honest, when we were going to set from base camp to set, they did have us wear these like big sort of like Star Wars kind of cloaks, you know, just covering our entire bodies, which felt hilarious. Um, but, you know, on the day to day, you know, on the weekends, I just kind of went out and people would come up to me and, you know, ask for photos or autographs or whatever and ask why I was there and I would just lie to them. <laughs> and it was fine, no, one's, no one really second guessed it. Immediately went on eBay and tried to find a Star Wars looking cloak worn by Aaron <laughs> Paul, but I found nothing, guys. Also, who's in New Mexico and doesn't up. think that Aaron Paul's doing a Breaking Bad thing? I assume people must have been like, nah, you're lying, buddy. <laughs> like, they must have thought, they must have thought something was going on. There's just got to be one Albuquerque clothing store that sells cloaks and like their business. <laughs> is booming and they're like man the kids are really getting back into cloaks it's gonna be a good summer yeah the albuquerque yeah. cloak factory it's that's like what, what do you guys got yeah. we got cloaks and we got hazmat suits and that is and vacuums so that is all we have um no but i'm i'm so happy that they made this film and netflix dropped this trailer out of nowhere guys mm -hmm. which was kind of insane like none of us were expecting it but breaking bad obviously isn't the only show to now get its own film we've seen this recently deadwood downton abbey so i'm curious to know from you guys are there any other long-standing series that you guys would love to see continued through a movie or like TV event like this. I don't know if this counts because technically it came from a movie, but I really love Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And I really want a Buffy the Vampire Slayer movie with Sarah Michelle Gellar, like in the lead, like see what's going on with Buffy. I just recently watched watched all of Angel. I'm like in that world. I'm like, let's have a Buffy movie again. I feel like a lot of fans would love to see yeah, that. Yeah, that's what I want. Can we just retcon the last season of Lost and then make a movie instead? <laughs> 
It's just, <laughs> like, just pretend like yeah. it just never happened. That. Yeah, we can I would do love that. that. Yeah, I mean, we had a Hulk movie come out, and people were like, ah, we didn't really like that Hulk movie. So then we just remade it three years later. Like, <laughs> yeah. can we do the same thing with Lost? Yeah, I why not? That's so funny. Um, I would love to see Fresh Prince of Bel Air get Yes, ready. that's good. You That's know, I just want to see Carlton and Hillary yeah. who moved to New York or Carlton went to Princeton come back together. They should do like a Thanksgiving special, you know, where they all come back yes. together. So the butler's there. Yes. And unlike Aaron Paul, who looked actually a lot older in this movie, but I think it made sense for his character, Will Smith looks the exact same. Gemini so man, we can just de- I was like, we can just de age him again. Yeah, it's just de age him. And then we can also get we can get a Family Matters movie yes. that's gonna be all about Carl Winslow, then that's gonna tie us back into Die Hard Six when into that comes it. out. Yes. Yeah, mind absolutely. blown. Comments are flying off right now. <laughs> All right, guys, let's tell the people at home what our fresh picks are. So these are shows, any show on TV that you just think people should be binging. Aaron, what's your pick? Uh, mine is Dead to Me on Netflix. Um, so good. I just, I loved it so much. I've never watched something so quickly. Like, I just couldn't get enough of it, and I just had to keep watching it. And it's like Christina Applegate, um, Linda Cardellini, who I've always loved, and then James Marsden, who I was like, yeah, bro, come on. I know. Also someone who hasn't been de-aged, right? He looks no, great. he looks great. A tall glass like, of water, that man is. Everyone looks great. I was like, let's watch it. And they just started filming the second season, and I'm like, I can't wait to yeah. see what happens. And season one ended on the best I, cliffhanger so ever. So good. Agreed. Mark, what do you think? I think we're on season five of Peaky Blinders now, which I haven't seen anything of, but now I'm going to, that's like, that's that's my binge movie that I'm going to yeah. take the next month and watch yeah. uh, for something I have been following every week on HBO 24-7 college football. Yes. They're at a different campus, and it's like the college version of Hard Knocks. I think that this week is Washington State. Their head coach is Mike Leach. He's like literally an insane human being who <laughs> thinks he's a pirate on the sideline. Like yeah. He's going to get a peg leg installed. That's how much he loves it. Whoa. This is going to be a fun episode to watch. Wow. I, lo- I love seeing real characters like that. Like I love reality. Yeah. That's, he's, yeah. he's a total nutcase, but a football genius. Yeah. Okay. I'll definitely have to check that out. So I like to go into wormholes, and after seeing El Camino Breaking Bad, I went into a Kristen Ritter like wormhole. Uh, yes. And I remember that Don't Trust the Bee in Apartment 23 was one of the first things I ever watched on Netflix. So if you guys have never seen it, I highly recommend it. I went so back good. and started watching it. She just plays this crazy roommate so well, and James Vanderbeek's in it, and he plays like a funny, <laughs> exaggerated version of himself. I love it. Absolutely I love too. it. Oh my god. All right, guys. Well, that is our show. Aaron, Mark, thank you so much for coming. Please come back. I love having you guys around. <laughs> I literally stay here when. I'm not. <laughs> Mark is just decoration. I'm we just live here, here now, yeah. yeah. Was, <laughs> You're the prettiest succulent I've ever seen. Uh, before we go, though, guys, I have some very exciting news. So Rotten Tomatoes has a new book out called Rotten Movies We Love. This book is out now. It's so good. It celebrates 101 movies on the green end of the spectrum that simply cannot be missed and are sure to start some debate. So it's a great coffee table book. Like, did you guys know that Hocus Pocus is rotten? Also, Space Jam is rotten. Whoa. Deeply offends me. Space Balls is 59%. So I'm going to go home, write a review, and see if I can get that impressed. <laughs> we all know the, the, percentages in, yeah, the percentages can change. So for more info on the book and El Camino, head on over to RottenTomatoes.com. Also, please comment below and let us know what you thought about the film. All the questions I asked them, I want you guys to answer. I love reading your comments. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. It's free and notification bell so you don't miss any future Couch Tomato episodes. This is a very long outro, but I digress. Join me next time as I talk about HBO's Watchmen. I'm Naz Perez, and I'm going to go look up some more Dr. Hook songs. (laughs) Bye, guys.